brothers and sisters, praise God. Join me in giving God uh, some thanks. Praise you, God. We bless you. We honor you. The mighty God, the creator of all things seen and unseen. God, without you, there is nothing. Without your grace and mercy, there is not even mankind. Lord, we bless you. We embrace you, O oh God. Father, we seek your face. We seek the will and the understanding of God. And we breathe, God. We thank God. Father, we we taste of your goodness and we bless you for we woke up this morning and found that we had our vision. We woke up this morning in a bed that was ours. Lord, we woke up in the home. We didn't wake up in a jail cell. We didn't wake up outside. It was your goodness and it was your mercies. Whatever plans that the devil had for us in the night, whatever plans he had for us yesterday, they failed because we are here today and that's because of you god and we bless your son the lord jesus christ who is our pastor the pastor of all pastors jesus we look forward to living in the kingdom when you establish your kingdom on earth and you've already established the kingdom while you were here and you're allowing us to be partakers of your kingdom by faith and soon you will have a tangible kingdom here lord and we look forward to being in your kingdom and reigning with you. Bless you, son of God. We bless you for your holy word. Bless you, my brothers and sisters. It's an honor to be before you this day. Um, I'm excited about the lesson. Um, it's a little sad, but it's also exciting because we're nearing the end of the gospel according to, uh, to John. And we're coming towards... Uh, uh, um, we're coming towards the, the crucifixion and the resurrection uh, of, of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, what they do to him is real sad. Now we, we're going, if those of you that are familiar with the other gospels of the Bible, you'll notice that John, which is what we're, we're teaching from John, uh, he leaves out a lot of the details that, that, that went on. But, but nevertheless, it's, you know, there's still some significant things that, that we're going to learn, at least for the most part today. It looks like we'll only get through one chapter. Uh, we'll do chapter 18, and then um, I'll ask you to join me at a, at a, at a later time uh, for chapter 19. Uh, those of you that don't have Bibles, don't worry about it. Go to our website, www.ubcchurch.org. Uh, click on the online Bible tab. It'll drop down somewhat of a column, a drop down box, and just click on uh, just click on John, and and then uh, the the actual chapter you want to follow us with today, and it'll bring up it'll bring that information up for you. Also, prayer request. Uh, I've said it for the last uh, seventeen chapters. Those of you that uh, require prayer, don't hesitate to go to our website, click on the prayer request link. It'll take you to that page. Fill out the confidential information. Prayer works. Uh, my wife is an awesome, awesome prayer warrior. The Lord has me petitioning night and day. Uh, it is a resource for all of us. Uh, and God hears a prayer. The, in the, in the uh, book of James, uh, the fifth chapter tells us the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. But prior to that, it says, confess your faults one to another that ye may be healed. Uh, and this is your opportunity to be ye healed. Whatever you're going through, we touch and agree with you as long as it's in the will of God. Bless you, my brothers. Bless you, my sisters. I won't hold you. We'll go right into the gospel uh, of uh, John. Um, as far as the, re the uh, review goes, uh, chapter 17 of the Gospel of John, it's it's truly a Lord's Prayer. You know, we do have the Lord's Prayer, our Father, which thou art in, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's not the Lord's Prayer we're referring to. Uh, the Lord's Prayer that we went over was actually the Lord Jesus Christ praying to his fathers concerning the ministry, concerning the disciples who will take up the ministry, uh, in the midst of his departure or after his departure, departure meaning ascension, um, 
He prayed for them. And then he also prayed for you. That's We had an opportunity to find that out uh, as we went through uh, 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 chapter 17. He also prayed. He says in, in verse 16, um, he said he prayed not for the world. It wasn't in verse 16. Uh, nevertheless, he says, I pray not for the world. He says, um, but he prayed for those. Let me see if I can find it here. Uh, now, it's part of the review. We, I know we went through it. When you get an opportunity, you can go through it. Nevertheless, the Lord Jesus Christ said that he didn't. He's not praying you for the world. Um, actually, I just found it as I'm talking to you. So let me just read that scripture for you. It's John 17, verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And so... He also, not only did he pray for his disciples, see, when he say, I pray now for the world, he was praying for the disciples that would be in the world because the world will try to kill them. But he was praying that the disciples would, only, would, would also be faithful, but will also impact the world with the ministry, with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and as I said, he, we did uh, find out during, during the uh, lesson uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ prayed also for us that would receive this word. He even prayed before his ascension. And the things that the Lord Jesus did as far as the prayer goes, uh, he was interceding before he ascended. He is still interceding after the ascension. All power of heaven and earth was given on the Lord Jesus Christ who sits on the right hand side of his father. So that's going to that's going to take it. That's going to complete the review. Most of the re review was just prayer. That was most of that chapter, I should say, was just the prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we'll go into chapter 18. We're going to uh, start if start here. And it's going to be talking about, uh, as I said, Jesus being sold out by by Judas. That's, I'm so excited. Let me shut up and get going here. Uh, chapter 18, verse 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the book, over the brook uh, Cedron. The brook is actually called Kidron, uh, where was a garden into which he entered it with the disciples. And this is John doesn't really elaborate on the name of the garden. Like I said, there are some details. Those of you that are familiar with the other Gospels, you'll realize that within this particular gospel, there are some details left out. The garden that John is talking about here is the Garden of Gethsemane. And within that garden, uh, Jesus went there to pray because the hour was at hand. And he needed to, in, in, in slang terms today, uh, he wanted to man up, if you will. Um, he was weak in his spirit. He was sad about what he had to go through. He knew every detail, every pain that he was going to have to go through. He knew the piercing on the side, the beating. Uh, uh, he knew all that. And you just don't go into it, you know, knowing what's before you. Because remember, he was born in as a man. Even though he's the son of God, he's still born in as a man. So the kind of pain that he was going to go through, he needed to be strengthened for that. And where do you find strength? You find that in prayer. And that's what he went. He went to the garden to pray. Uh, that was his prayer closet, if you will. Verse two, Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place for Jesus oftentimes re reverted there with his uh, resorted, I should say, uh, there with his disciples. Judas then having received a band of men, a band of men and officers uh, from the chief priests and the Pharisees came thither with lamps and torches and weapons. Now, a band of men, a, a band of men. I looked that up. We're talking somewhere between 300 to 600. They're talking about a cohort. And the cohort is like uh, three, 300 to 600. Um, and most of these were Roman soldiers that they had gotten. So they were serious about apprehending the Lord Jesus Christ. And all this was done uh, courtesy of Judas Iscariot. Um, verse 3, or verse 4 rather. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, whom seek ye? That's where you can see the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ, because the scripture just got done saying he knew everything that was going to happen to him. He knew every detail. 
But instead of waiting, once they got in proximity of where he was, instead of him waiting for them to come find him, he just walked up to them. That is the strength of the Holy Ghost and the angels because the angels ministered to him. His father sent the angels to minister to him that he could go through. And you can see the results of it. He just walked up to him and said, who y'all looking for? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said that to them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said, said unto them, I am he, they went backwards and fell to the ground. Can you imagine that? I mean, who are you looking for? We're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. I am he. And soon as he said it, they just, they fell back. What kind, <laughs> my wife jokes about this. You know, but you have to wonder, was there a sparkle in his eye, you know, like a glistening in his eye, divine glistening when he said that to make them all fall back? Because now once you get the first few to fall back, it's a domino effect. And you got and you got to know this. The, they're, these are Roman soldiers, you know, um, they know really any they don't know anything really about the Lord Jesus Christ. According to the Pharisees, they're saying that this man is armed and dangerous. He's they, they probably telling the these soldiers that he's full of witchcraft and, and everything else. So when he said I'm he, you can imagine they're subdued by their fear, or was it just a twinkle in the Lord Jesus' eye that was enough to just throw them back? Amazing. Verse seven, then asked he them again, whom seek ye? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said, I've told you that I'm he. If therefore you seek me, let these go their way. And of course, he's talking about his disciples. Um, he had two or three disciples with him. I know he had Peter and John with him. Uh, why he, I, I, I can't remember if there was one more there. Uh, sorry about that, folks. Verse nine. Uh, that the same might be fulfilled, which he spake of them, which thou gavest me, have I lost none. So one of the, one of the things he started to do was intercede for those few disciples that he had with him. If y'all looking for me, fine, I'll go peaceably, uh, but let my disciples go. And he was saying that so that the scriptures would be fulfilled, that he didn't lose any of his disciples. Uh, verse 10, then Simon Peter, having drew the sword and smote the high priest servant and cut off his right ear, and the servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink of it? Then the band of the, band of the captains and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him. Uh, so the high-ranking guards uh, came forth, and they end up uh, subduing the Lord Jesus Christ. But let me go back, Peter. You you gotta admire, you gotta admire Peter. I mean, Peter had a lot of um, crazy things to say. He was he, quick to he, quick to speak, slow to listen, if you will. But when the kind when the time came. Peter said that I'll go with you to the end. I'll die. And guess what? All those men in the midst, knowing they're outnumbered, Peter displayed uh, heroism. I mean, pulled out his, he, not only did he pull it out, he wasn't talking crazy with it. He didn't pull it out talking about, this is what I'm going to do if you all don't leave. Peter pulled it out and got busy, you know, but that was the display of love towards the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, Amazing. And, and, and that part never gets talked about. But the Lord Jesus let him know, I have don't be trying to fight for me. This cup is sponsored by my father. Therefore, I must take it. So that, that it's, it's, it's touching. The rest of this is the whole thing is touching. But understanding the events, the events that's leading up uh, to his crucifixion, you know, it's 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 something else. Uh, verse 13, let him away to Annas first, uh, for he was the father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas uh, was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it might be expedient that one should die for the people. So this was like, this was like an arraignment when they went to Annas, this was like an arraignment. 
and then the next place he goes he goes to he goes to Annas to get arraigned and then he goes to to Caiaphas uh, for a pretrial if you will uh, verse 15 Simon Peter followed Jesus and so did another disciple that disciple was known unto the high priest and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest we believe that we believe that other disciple to be John uh, verse 16 Peter stood at the door it says without, but it's, it's saying outside. Peter stood at the door outside, uh, then went out that other disciple, uh, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door and brought Peter in. So that other disciple went out, uh, went out from the high priest, went out and talked to the lady that, that was the doorkeeper and convinced her to let Peter in. Then said the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciple? He said, I am not. Now, let me stop right there. Do you remember uh, a couple lessons ago, we had an opportunity to, to, to uh, listen to the Lord Jesus prophesy concerning these events and how Peter would uh, deny him. And he said, before the cock crows, thou should deny me thrice which is three times there are other scriptures said there are other uh, uh the the other scriptures or the parallel scriptures in the, the other gospels actually says that uh before the crop the before the cock crow twice you would deny me three times uh but nevertheless john records it as just before the cock crows he'll deny him three times and there was the first denial uh so he says i am not uh, and then verse 18, and the, servant, the servants and the officers stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold, and they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered, Jesus answered him, I spake openly in the world, I even taught in the synagogue and in the temple, um, whether the Jews always, where the Jews always resort, and in and in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me, for I've said nothing unto them. Behold, they know what I said. So let me read that again, so I you know make sure we got it right here. Uh, Jesus said unto them, I spake openly to the world. I even told in the synagogues and in the temples whether the Jews always resort. And in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. That's, I, I read it wrong before. But it's self-explanatory, you know. Why are you coming at me like I'm some kind of criminal? Why are you coming at me like I've been spreading seditions and heresies? I was even in front of you and I was in front of these, I was in front of the very people on the Sabbath teaching or on, you know, first day of the week, whenever. My gospel went abroad in public, not behind no doors. I was not spreading seditions. I wasn't hiding and giving, you know, communist messages. I was spreading the gospel openly and publicly. If you got any questions about what I was doing, why don't you ask all these other people? They was there and they heard me speak. Major, verse 22, and when he had thus spoken, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I spoke an evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smartest me? Why hit me? Uh, and Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. And, th and they said, therefore, unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. That's twice. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, who Peter's, uh, uh, whose ear Peter cut off, said, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again and immediately the cock crew. So the 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 crock, the cock or the rooster started to crow and uh for Peter had just gave the third the third denial of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um but the the person it says here in verse twenty five uh Peter stood and warmed himself and there 
And they said, therefore unto him, are not thou the one uh, that denied him? But verse 26 is actually what I wanted to get. I wanted the servants of the high priest being his kinsman whose ear Peter cut off. So the maybe a cousin or whatever relative of the one that got the ear cut off, they were there and they seen Peter. And the first thing they said is, wait a minute. Aren't that you? Didn't you cut so-and-so's ear off? Ain't that you? And Peter was like, no, no, no. Y'all got it all wrong. You got it all wrong. You know, you don't know me. You know, he was because <laughs> the other scriptures, the other gospels got Peter going off. I mean, he's, he's, you know, they said that he started swearing. He, he got so mad. And um, so you can imagine, you know, John got him a little calm here. But if you actually read the other gospels you'll see that he was actually a little excited when they questioned him and of course the cock crew now let me let me say something on behalf of peter that's important that nobody i don't know if i've heard anybody talk about it but it's relevant if you can understand the lord jesus said that it would be that the scriptures were fulfilled that he lost none if peter would have said that it's me i'm yes i was i'm the one to cut your cousin's ear off Yes, that was me. I'm the one that drew the sword in the Garden of Gethsemane. Gethsemane, what are you going to do? If Peter would have went out like that, they would have subdued him too and crucified and killed him. It was not, it was, so some things had to happen. Of course, Peter denied the Lord Jesus Christ three times and it looked bad, but you got to kind of look up the road or in this case, look down the road here. It was prevalent for Peter to be in position to help start the church. Amen. I mean, when we go into the book of Acts, you know, um, you're going to see the position that Peter takes, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit, you know, moving on them uh, the day of Pentecost. Peter needed to be in position. Had Peter not denied, they're already questioning Peter because they want to deliver him up. He looks familiar. They want to deliver him up. And to make sure that Peter is not lost with the Lord Jesus Christ or not killed, I should say, with the Lord Jesus Christ, it was needs be that he did uh, fabricate a story, if you will. Amen. It was needs be that he did lie, you know, and we look at it as pretty bad, but some things had to happen so that the greater good can be served later. Uh, verse 28, then led they Jesus from uh, uh Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment and it was early and they themselves were not into the judgment hall lest they should be defiled but that they might eat the Passover so what's happening is that the 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 hall of judgment is like a Roman court if you will or, or you know like a, a Roman area to where you're tried by the Romans that's considered Gentiles so they didn't want to they didn't want to enter because they can't have when when you got the Passover, you can't. Def, it's considered defilement to be messing around with anyone or anything that's that's of the Gentiles. So therefore, they probably got as close as they could and then called out for uh, called called out uh, for for Pontius Pilate to come on out there. Uh, but nevertheless, that's that's the reason they wanted it. They wouldn't be able to consume the feast of the Passover had they actually went in with Jesus. So they called for Pilate to come forth. Um, Pilate then went out unto them and said, what occasion bring, what occasion bring you against this man? Uh, they answered and said unto him, if we were not, if, if he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him unto thee. So, pa so Pilate, like, what's the problem? What, what has this man done? You know, y'all probably just tripping. They said, no, if he wasn't a criminal, we wouldn't be here right now. Uh, verse 31, then said Pilate unto them, take ye him and judge him according to your law. The Jews therefore said unto them, it's not lawful for us to put any man to death. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which, which he spake signifying what death he should die. Jesus said that he would be crucified. Now, they were, they were under Roman laws. Okay, because they're like someone in a, in a Roman jurisdiction, if you will. In the Roman jurisdiction, Christ would be crucified. But having turned him back over to the Jews, he would be stoned to death. So it's, it's the, for the scriptures to be fulfilled, 
he needed to be ye crucified because it was already, as I said, for the scriptures to be fulfilled, which means it's already written, he must needs be crucified. If, he, if they turn him back over to the Jews again, it would be a stoning and the scriptures would not be fulfilled. It wouldn't be allowed to happen. Amen. Uh, verse, verse 33, then Pilate entered her to the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him saying, Jesus answered him, uh, sayest thou this thing of thyself or did others tell it to thee? Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Uh, Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now uh, my kingdom is not from hence. And, and fantastic what he just said here. He, he was basically saying, if this is self-explanatory, if my kingdom were of this world, not only would my disciples come running, but my father would say legions of angels that would have, they would have prevented the Jews from apprehending me in the first place. They would, the Jews would have been subdued. Uh, you know, so he's, he's letting Pilate know. Um, verse uh, 37, Pilate therefore said unto him, art thou a king then? Jesus answered, thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born and for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Jesus says, for this cause for came I into this world and for this end, everything is written. Me coming into the world and my departure. But there is a greater good for these things to have happened. You know, there is a greater good that everybody that hear and receive uh, will be saved. You know, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice and we needed to be able to hear the Lord Jesus voice. That's why he came into this world for by him, we would be saved through the receiving of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the receiving of him and his word, because indeed he is the word of God. Verse 38, Pilate saith unto him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all, uh, but ye have a custom. I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will you therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but uh, Barabbas. Now Barabbas, now Barabbas was a robber. I'm just getting ahead of us. I'm getting excited. But this, this is powerful. We'll stop right there. And uh, we'll, pick up, uh, we'll pick up 19 in another recording. Yes, yes, yes. We'll pick up 19 and another recording. But you can see Pilate wanted to let the Lord Jesus go. Um, and as we get into 19, we're going to have an opportunity to see uh, that, that, again, Pilate, almost Pilate seems to intercede for the Lord Jesus Christ, but he didn't put enough oomph into it, if you will, you know. He began to back down because the, the, the animosity, the, the Jews started hanging something over his head. We're going to find that out. Uh, fantastic, fantastic lesson. I know it's short. Uh, we're trying to condense it down. Um, but stick with us. We're, we're coming to the end. Nevertheless, you know what we do. We open up the, the gates of the kingdom of God. Um, what can I say? that Jesus has not already said. Looking at verse 37, you say that I'm a king to this end was I born and for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness unto the truth and everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Here is the problem. If you can hear the Lord Jesus Christ talking even in, in this message, even in this lesson here, that means you are of the truth if you can hear what he's saying. The problem is if you still choose not to receive him, even as you have heard that he is the truth and you know it and you still choose not to receive him. I'm here to tell you there is a life 
there is a joy and there is there is goodness. There is a kingdom of God that has a place reserved for you. But watch this. Just as God is waiting for you to accept his son. On the other side, the enemy is hoping that you don't. And he's going to keep putting up lies because he is the father of lies and Jesus is truth. So the devil is going to keep putting up lies. And guess what kind of lies he might be telling you? You got time. You, the world is not good. Tribulation is not coming tomorrow. You got time. He is going to take the truth and distort it. He is because he is the father of lies. The problem is. God will rebuke him long enough to allow you to make it to an intelligent decision. But oh, my brother and oh, my sister, how long will you keep putting it off? How long will you keep waiting to make the decision that's necessary towards your salvation? We spend so much time investing into our day, whether it's new clothes, new cars, new homes, or just trying to maintain those very things that we have. And the problem is you can't take it with you. Has the devil told you that you will lose these things if you go follow the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, here's what happens when you decide to take the Lord Jesus truth. He begins to open your eyes. Truth begins to set you free from the lies. And he began to open your eyes and allow you to see that those very things that you've been working so hard for and killing yourself over, they have no value towards your eternal life. Now, it's not like God wouldn't want you to have those things because our father is rich. Our father owns everything. God owns everything. It's not that he wouldn't want you to have them. He don't want you to be consumed by those things that had a history of pulling you from him in the first place. The devil make you think that you got to have these things because he wants to woo and entice your flesh with electronics, new cars. He wants you to have the new cars so that you can work yourself to death and don't give God the opportunity or don't give God the blessings of hearing from you in praise and worship. This is what the devil wants. He is the father of lies. He won't bless you with a mortgage that you can't handle so that you can get evicted or, or be in foreclosure and then do yourself off because the world has collapsed because you feel like you have nowhere to go. This is the way the enemy works. He hates you, but he'll disguise his hate by giving you all kind of joys in life. But it's not joys. It's all death. Wrapped up in electronics, wrapped up in drugs. The Lord Jesus is truth. And that truth will release you from all the debt, all the damnation, all the addictions. The Lord Jesus is here to release and to save you. But the problem is, can't nobody do it. He can't force the issue. All we can do is a plead, plead and appeal. But you have to make the decision. You do. Which, what are you going to choose? Which decision you will make? Will you choose to put it off to the side and then listen to the enemy tell you that you got time? Will you, or would you take this? Would you take it right now? Would you take it and run with it? Oh, man, praise God. You don't know how much time you got. A lot of us forecast our bills. Next week, I'll pay this bill, you know, according to the check that I'll get next week. And according to my next two-week check, I'll do this and I'll do that. You don't know what kind of time you got. You're listening to the enemy tell you you got all kind of time. But you don't know. Our church used to have a slogan or a saying, Run out on time before time runs out on you. What are you going to do? If you're ready to receive them, you may be a little nervous about it. It's okay. That's He's here. His spirit is going to strengthen you so 
you're going to be able to stand and you're going to be successful in the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. The problem is not you get the problem is not you being in there. The problem right now is you getting to the kingdom. And this is how we get you there. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is what you do to accept him. You said, say this with me. If you are ready to receive him and you, you believe this in your heart and you confess this from your mouth, if you are ready, then let's do the believing and let's do the confessing. You receive him right now. You believe this, you receive him and you say this with me. God, I come to you just as I am. Lord, you know all my sins. You know my addictions and you know my struggles, God. Father, I believe the Lord Jesus Christ is your only begotten child. And God, I believe you sent the Lord Jesus Christ down to earth. I believe that he was crucified. I believe that he was killed, buried and resurrected on the third day. And Father, I also believe soon after he ascended up into heaven and now he resides on your right hand side. Sweet Jesus Christ, I call on you, child of God, to forgive me of my sins. Come into me and clean me up. Strengthen me. Take away those things that have separated me from you. My life is now your life. Strengthen me to accept you and live for you. Remove everything out of my life that is separating me from you. I believe you are the child of God. If you said that and you mean that, if you said it and you mean it, then praise God, you have been saved. You have become a, a recipient of the Holy Ghost. You have just been saved and the angels are rejoicing. The enemy is angry because right now he knows, well, yeah, you're saved. But here's the one thing that he knows. The Lord Jesus Christ is going to strengthen you to tear his kingdom down. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. Now, here's one thing that we have to do to make this thing complete. You need to be ye baptized. You need to be ye baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What I need you to do is grab your phone book. Look up that church that's down the street from you. Look up your cousin's church. Don't call too many people before you get baptized because the devil has agents and he works through people. The enemy works through people. You can look that up in the book of Ephesians. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. You know, we work against the rulers of the dark of this world. It's saying that our enemy is, is of a spiritual nature that uses physical people to, to disrupt us, to, to stagnate our progress in the kingdom of God. So you don't want to call too many people. What you want to do is handle the business first. You want to be able to call a man of God to come out to your home and let this man of God know that you've been baptized. He's either going to come to your home or he's going to have you go to his church and he will baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. I bless you. Things are going to get better now. It started with you making a decision. And now that the decision is made, now that you've accepted him, and now that you're planning to get baptized, you're going to be all right. And those of you that have given your lives back, because you can say the same prayer to give your lives back to Christ, you are back. You are back. He has you. You've already, you've, you've confessed. You told him to forgive you of your sins. He has. He's welcomed you back. From this point forward, he's going to live through you and you're going to live for him if you let him. Until we meet again, my brothers and sisters, peace be upon you and your families.
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Amen and amen.